No, you stay right there. Let's begin. 
this morning in the manner of friends with a moment of silent worship. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Faria Khan, the vice clerk of our board of trustees, who will start our morning with a reading. Faria. with you this morning to see all of your beautiful faces on this gorgeous day on our beautiful campus. So, into, the into the microphone. Good morning. It's an honor for me to be here with all of you on this beautiful day on our beautiful campus. On, the beha on behalf of the Board of the Trustees, I want to begin with a poem. The poem is from Ibn al-Arabi, a poet and scholar who lived in Andalusian Spain in the 12th century at an extraordinary, dynamic, and collaborative time of Jewish, Christian, and Islamic life. My heart can take on any form, a meadow for gazelles, a cloister for monks. Sacred ground for idols, Gaba for the circling pilgrim. The tables of the Torah, the scrolls of the Quran. My creed is love. Wherever its caravan turns along the way, that is my belief, my faith. Thank you, Faria. Good morning, friends. Good morning. My name is Craig Sellers. I'm the head of school here at Friends Central, and I have the good fortune of greeting you this morning and welcoming you to our 175th commencement ceremony honoring the fine young people of the class of 2020. On behalf of our devoted Board of Trustees, our dedicated and talented faculty and staff, our accomplished alumni, and most importantly, on behalf of the extraordinary students in the class of 2020, welcome to our school and welcome to these commencement exercises. And in this particularly historic year, with these unusually challenging circumstances, I want to make sure that my welcome on behalf of all of us is just as genuine and just as experienced for those attending via the internet this morning as it is for those who are sitting here at 86 tables in front of me. Yes, I'm looking at you, webcam, and I want to say thank you to the more than 200 people who are joining us by the internet. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It is terrific to have everyone with us this morning. It's exciting to be together in this creative, responsible fashion. So I'm just going to keep channeling that feeling of excitement in my greeting this morning while the sun is shining and our campus is looking like a picture postcard and say thank you to our buildings and grounds, our safety, and our tech crews who help to make our campus as beautiful as it is safe and who make all the live streaming logistics look easy so we can enjoy this morning together. Thank you. Thank you to the families who had the generosity of spirit to collaborate with us over the years 
and who no doubt played a key role in getting the class of 2020 here this morning looking so splendid in their caps and gowns and sashes. With your commitment, your collaboration, and your resources, you have provided a life-changing experience to your children that we know you will witness in hundreds of subtle and stunning ways for the rest of your life. Thank you to the faculty and staff who by design are watching from home. Amidst unprecedented circumstances, you have inspired this class to heights they could not have imagined without your kindness, your caring, and your passion, and your willingness to be just as committed to excellence delivered via Zoom as you are to excellence in your classrooms. Thank you, faculty and staff. Thank you to Beth Johnson, our indomitable upper school principal, for her determination, her insistence on driving all of us to this moment this morning. You see, Beth absolutely knew three months ago that the Quaker gods were going to be shining brightly on us this morning. Friends, that is leadership laced with love and optimism. Thank you, Beth. And to the 101 simply extraordinary athletes, artists, and academics who comprise the class of 2020, I have two simple thoughts for you before introducing the speakers you have selected from your class. First, we want you to know we are filled with pride about you and your accomplishments. You have let your life speak, and in that eloquence, we have come to know you as exceptional young people who bring hope to our world. We know that because you have improved and challenged our school and your classmates during your time at Friends with your respectful, thoughtful, courageous acts that you will continue to peacefully transform the world. And second, thank you for wearing your masks and observing social distancing this morning. These simple acts of care remind us that we are connected, remind us that we can behave in ways that elevate the health and safety of others, and provides a powerful model of individual responsibility that again, gives us hope for our future. Our ceremony today began with silent worship which encourages all of us to be fully present right here, right now. For years and years, we have consciously, intentionally designed this ceremony to be filled with student and faculty voices at the center. And we will continue that tradition this morning. We can be sure that each of our three featured speakers will bring us further into the understanding of the meaning of a Friend Central education. I would now like to invite Jade Halpern and Gordon Wilcox to speak with us this morning. You should know that Jade and Gordon were selected for this honor by members of the class of 2020. We will begin with Jade. my graduating classmates, the Friends Central faculty and staff, and the loved ones who joined us today in person and virtually. It's good to finally see you all again. I'm Jade Halpern, and I love bus rides. Now, there are many great things about Friends Central, and the field trips are just one of them. But today, I'm only going to talk about the trip to the field trip, or in other words, the school bus. I could expound endlessly about field trip bus rides. I like looking out the window, sharing snacks with my friends sitting next to me, and taking naps instead of going to class. And my favorite bus ride definitely included all of those things. I'll set the scene. 
It was October 30th, 2019. The Friends Central class of 2020 had just left the McCarter Theater at Princeton University, where we'd had the pleasure of viewing the Looking Glass Theater Company's production of Frankenstein. As we filed into the two buses and pulled out of the parking lot, none of us could have had any idea what fate awaited us. You see, about an hour later, still miles away from campus, there were whispers of a problem on Roosevelt Boulevard. One of the buses had broken down. For half of my classmates, that's about where the story ends. The rest of us, though, spent an hour in the purgatory of the Roosevelt Boulevard highway median. Small median, fast traffic, no postcard scenery. We only had two days left to submit our early decision applications, and it was raining. Again, this was my favorite bus ride. Here's the thing. When that bus ran out of fuel miles from home, we got handed an in-between. This rare and special space where you are truly in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do. You finished one thing, haven't started the next. The only thing to do in the in-between is just to be. Buddhist tradition calls the space in between death and rebirth bardo, the period where the greatest spiritual transformation is possible. Zen meditation often concentrates on the space between one breath and the next, the, because that microscopic in-between is where our existence hides without distraction. Salvador Dali would nap with a key in his hand. Just as he was drifting off, he'd drop the key and the sound would wake him up. If he could catch himself in that in-between, that little space between waking and dreaming, he thought he'd create a masterpiece. So getting stuck on a highway median between two opposing lanes of traffic, halfway through your journey, total in-between. And my classmates are great at living in the in-betweens. Sure, there was the gray, gray sky way above us, but there on the grass, it was just me and my friends up to absolute nonsense. We climbed trees, played a ton of heads up, and got snacks at the 7-Eleven. I remember crafting an elaborate secret handshake with Lindsay Schweitzer, shouting to be heard over the semi-trucks passing by. We had a moment to just be together, and what more could you ask for? So that was a great bus ride. Once I started looking for the in-betweens, I spotted them everywhere. Passing my friends on the oval, in-between. Five minute break in the middle of a double block, in-between. Driving from campus to Dunkin' Donuts at recess, in-between. Principal's night out, waiting around after school until the play starts, professional in-between. It's so, so easy to feel stuck in an in-between. I mean, these last five months have felt like an excruciatingly long in-between, doing nothing and going nowhere. And to be fair, when we found out that the bus had been fixed and we would get to go home, we all cheered. We need all of our in-betweens to have an end or they aren't between anything, just after. I'm speaking to you all today as we end one of the longest in-betweens of our lives and commence upon the next. You could look back at our momentous 14 years and define the class of 2020 as the one that submitted their common apps two days after that bus ride, participated in the largest civil rights movement our country has ever seen, and graduated in a pandemic. And you'd be right. But come on, have you met my classmates? Of course they're gonna change the world. Today, let's just look for the in-betweens. For a moment, let's take our eyes off the theatrical thunderstorm overhead and just watch our friends dancing on the highway median in front of us. To the class of 2020, good luck on all the in-betweens that await you. And when you find yourself stranded on a highway median, Call me.
Frankie J. Gordon. Gordon Wilcox, friends. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you to all the faculty, staff, parents, and friends joining us virtually today. I thought I would be delivering this speech from my bedroom, worrying about my Wi-Fi connection, whether or not my bed is made, and if my dog is going to burst in and make it sound like I'm delivering this in a war zone. So thank you all. So I'm really grateful we're here together today, even though we're further apart physically and here later than we'd expected to be. In a great meeting for sharing during our final day on campus, it struck me how compassionate this class is towards anyone who needs our support. When I shared how the threat of the pandemic made me reassess all that I take for granted, I also thought how it made me more grateful for the time we had together here. But like most others, I assumed in a few months we'd be back to normal. Obviously, we weren't able to resume our old lives, and it hurts to realize that our last day together was that overcast Tuesday in March, and nobody knew it. But this lack of closure is what makes me grateful to be here, despite the circumstances, five months later. What I realized during that meeting for sharing was something that SCS faculty, parents, and community members have said about us all along. There is something special about the class of 2020. And they all say the same thing. It's how we care for each other, how we support each other. I know, as I've had that experience personally, I felt that support freshman year when I played in the student-teacher basketball game. When it comes to basketball, I do not have game. But I thought I'd at least be competent enough to reach my goal of not humiliating myself in front of the entire school. Yet, I was wrong. As soon as I touched the ball, I made a run for what I believed to be the undefended opposing basket. But as I missed my layup, I realized I was standing alone at my own undefended basket. The crowd laughed loudly. Within five seconds of being on the court, I had failed at my sole mission. I walked slowly off the court, tail between my legs, anticipating the mockery to come. Now is the point in the story where you're expecting me to say that my friends didn't make fun of me. Of course they made fun of me. But I never felt humiliated. I felt supported. Here's why. They reminded me that it wasn't about playing my highest level of basketball, but it was about putting myself out there and having fun while I do it. Hey, even the Dalai Lama said, compassion is the radicalism of our time. I never thought of our class to be radical, but by his standards, you all have proved to be nothing but. I used to think that if people laughed at me, it would be mortifying. But instead, your support has helped me see that I love making people laugh. Here's an example of how far all of you have taken me. This year, I performed at Comedy Night, where a professional comedian proceeded to body shame me for 15 minutes. And I took it as a compliment. I know that your compassion and support has made me a better person, but I also know that it's helped us make each other better. If you want to see that transformation at work, I suggest you go to the reading room, where we were most likely to remind each other. You have to take risks. Put yourself out there and embrace those fun and embarrassing moments along the way. For those who don't know, the reading room is designed for studying, but not a whole lot of reading ever happened there. Instead, it's a hangout spot for seniors. In many ways, I think the reading room was the heart and soul of the class of 2020. Enter during a Friday community block and you think you are at a party. Need a power nap? The reading room's got you. College applications approaching and you just need a little support to help you take a deep breath? The reading room's got you. Need a TikTok dance tutorial? Surprisingly enough, the reading room's got you. The reading, a place to come together where you forget that time is passing. On what we'd later discover was our final day on campus, a group of us spent our last block sitting around the reading room in comfy chairs, fearing it may be the last time we would be together. A room that's usually loud and bustling fell silent as we shared what we were grateful for. That's what the room was in essence a measure of how everyone was feeling. The excitement, the anxiety, the encouragement, and in the end, the gratitude and love. 
But virtual school did not mean the end of our class's radical compassion or the end of the reading room. Once we went virtual full time, some of our classmates created the reading Zoom, a constantly active Zoom meeting where you could pop in at any time to catch up with friends and get a little support while stuck at home. Even though the virtual reading room did not feature any of Mr. Gruber's trademark drop-ins or leftover muffins from homerooms, it still had our energy, originality, and camaraderie, which during quarantine was more than enough to put a smile on my face and yet another way we supported one another. Our radical, compassionate drive to bring the best out of people and desire to help others stretches far beyond just our own class. Now, I could give some speech about how we're going to change the world and live out all the Quaker spices. But that's not me, and that's not us. Many of us are already making these changes. Centuries ago, da Vinci said, it had long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and happened to things. Hundreds of years later, you all continue to prove him right by making the change happen. Time and time again, this class has demonstrated truly compassionate forms of radicalism. We fought to protect the environment by pushing to have refillable water bottle stations on campus, took stands for racial justice by participating in Black Lives Matter protests, and spoke at rallies at gun violence. One example that impressed me most is when a group of women in our class wrote a letter to the women in the grades above us, thanking them for their courage and commitment to speaking up during the Me Too movement. Their actions have made me want to become a better friend, ally, and man. But it's not just me that these actions inspire. You have already inspired the friends, family members, and teachers joining us today. Now, it's time to continue this radical compassion wherever we go next. Keep challenging the status quo. Keep uplifting our friends. And make sure we keep having fun while we do it. And if you ever need a friend to talk to, you can find me alone in the reading Zoom practicing my TikTok dances. Can we please give Jade and Gordon another round of applause? I have two introductions for you. One is by our speaker himself, and I'm gonna give that one first. And the other one is prepared. The first introduction, here's Grant. <laughs> the second introduction. Before leaving for the Crossroads School in California, Mariama Richards, our former assistant head of school for academic program, wrote an introduction for our speaker, Grant Calder. It is her words I'm reading to you today. About a year ago, Mari says, I was at a conference at the Episcopal Academy. I introduced myself to a participant and mentioned that I worked at Friends Central. The attendee immediately leaped into a story about his neighbor who works at Friends Central School. He couldn't remember his name, but he recounted the story of his recent move and how this tall and fit man jumped in to help him and his family carry some really large furniture. I immediately said, that's Grant Calder. I knew it was him because that is what Grant does. He jumps in to help. Whether it is reaching, reaching history, sorry, whether it is teaching history or German or during the college process, he is masterful in his role and he is ready to give support to any student or any adult who needs it. I have always heard tales of how he has scaled the walls of room 25 while teaching class, displaying his passion for climbing. Mari says, I wish I had seen that. I wish I had seen it too. It's a fine tactic for keeping your lectures interesting. I also learned from his daughter, Roxy, that he hums a particular Bach tune all of the time. I also learned that while he was a student at Germantown Friends, he was known for sleeping all the time. 
Apparently, there is even a school yearbook photo of him sleeping while leaning on a tree. The piece of information that intrigued me the most about Grant was that apparently he doesn't like to pick favorites. For example, he doesn't have a favorite color or a favorite food. Although Roxy and John say they pressed him many times, he's never willing to share or own up to having favorite things. They say that he always replies that it made no sense to choose just one. This intrigues me because as a person who also guides students toward a college choice, his stance to stay open and ready to enjoy everything must be the reason why he is so good at his job. This, makes Grant, this marks Grant's 27th year at Friends Central School. And for one, I'm happy that he made the choice to bring his light here. I join Mariama Richards in saying, please join me in welcoming today's speaker, Grant Calder. things. One, the story about climbing the walls is a vicious rumor, never happened. And two, I'm limping because I herniated a disc during the lockdown, trying to exercise in my basement. So I'm not going to be lifting a lot of heavy furniture anytime soon, sadly. I do enjoy lifting heavy furniture. Don't worry too much. I know the sun is very hot, but this is printed in uh, large type because large type is starting to be more appealing to me. And so it's less long than it looks. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Really a pleasure. Congratulations to all of you kids. I have known quite a few of you since you were fairly small, and some of you, including mine, who were once fairly small, are no longer fairly small. Um, and I still get surprised watching them walk by, being larger than I expect. Thanks, Jade and Gordon. Those are great talks. I uh, am not going to be able to compete at all with your humor and descriptions and generally entertaining styles, but I will uh, see what I can do on a probably more sober note. It makes perfect sense for you to be thinking about the future, you class of 2020, about what comes next, particularly this year when the answers to that question remain frustratingly unclear. But your situation reminds me that even in quieter times, we live in a future-focused society. Americans love to obsess about the next big thing, the shiniest new toy, or the pundit's latest predictions. History is the past, yesterday's news. Well, today's news, the pandemic, the economic crisis, the protests that have rocked the country this spring and summer, and the events triggering them, all drive the point home that we are stuck with the past. Whether we want to embrace that reality consciously and constructively or not is up to us. Of course, it would be great if the next big thing were an effective vaccine but that remains in the future. More worthy of our attention now is that when a vaccine does become widely available, millions of Americans who do not believe the medical establish establishment has their best interests at heart, or who do not trust the government, or pharmaceutical companies, or all three, may refuse to be treated this is a legacy of our past. Maybe it's fair to apply Freud's line about World War I, which you all know from 10th grade history. <laughs> Come on, folks, what is it? A legacy? Legacy of embitterment. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> legacy of embitterment. 
The spread of COVID-19 has brought renewed attention to previous outbreaks. In the flu epidemic of 1918, the first case in Philadelphia was detected on September 17th of that year. Tragically, the city allowed 200,000 people to gather 11 days later for a parade. The death rate in the spike that followed was the highest of any city in the country. After that, Philadelphia clamped down. They cut the death rate almost to zero 11 weeks later and avoided the later surges, familiar term now, that hit other cities in which restrictions were relaxed too soon. The data show unequivocally that the most effective method employed in fighting the flu epidemic of 1918 was social distancing. Here is a good practical example of the valuable lessons history has to offer. But history offers us more. In its recognizable cycles and patterns reassure us that versions of the challenges we face in our times have been shared by our forebears. They struggled and suffered and argued and disagreed and faced unknowns and persevered, and so shall we. The members of this graduating class who took US history with me as 11th graders read from the memoir of a woman who grew up during those years. Mary Morrison contracted the flu as a child in 1918. The virus permanently damaged one of her lungs. But what she remembered most was the sense of isolation, of being alone, of being quarantined. By the time she was in high school, the family had moved to the Gulf Coast, south of St. Petersburg, where the Depression came early. In 1925, a real estate bubble burst, very much like it did here in 2008. Mary's father, who had invested in the boom, lost everything. Land values collapsed. Surrounded by unfinished hotels, neighborhoods of half-built homes and grids of unfinished streets and sidewalks was, she wrote, like living in the ruins of a lost civilization. Determined to get away, Mary spent every Saturday at the kitchen table prepping for the SAT. She was the first student in her high school to take the test. Fun college counseling fact, 1926 was the first year the SAT was given, the year she took it. In the fall of 27, Mary headed off to a women's college in Massachusetts, far enough away from Florida to raise her hopes she might never have to return. Her mother had scraped together enough money to send her for one year. She worked hard. She earned scholarships for the next three. The crash came in the first semester of her third year. Suddenly, she was no longer, as she put it, one poor person among so many well-off ones. The others were in the same boat, she continued, and I was able to comfort them a little in the shock of it all. She graduated in 1931, but though she'd found an apprentice teaching position, it lasted only one year. The next summer, with no job prospects, nowhere else to go, she admitted defeat. She boarded a train in Boston and headed back to Florida. Thinking she might at least continue her studies, Mary visited the University of Florida campus where the English department chairman informed her that he had never admitted a woman. In fact, he claimed there were actually laws against it. Word of her inquiry, however, somehow reached the president, who made it clear to the chairman that any potential graduate students, including female ones, would be considered. As it turned out, Mary could not even afford the minimal fees the state university would have charged, but she persevered. She made her way. She lived, she became a successful writer and teacher, and she lived into the 21st century long enough to meet two of her great grandchildren who went on to attend Friends Central School and are sitting here today. The members of this class will also make their way. And before I let you go to begin that adventure, a couple of requests. First, Though most of you will not be writers by profession, I hope you will follow Jade, Gordon, and Mary's example and write about your lives. Our chronicles and narratives are the big things. Second, show interest in those you meet. Listen to their stories. And when they are disturbing or painful to hear, make an extra effort. I don't have the data to support this, but I am convinced that connecting and communicating are the most effective ways to make our society healthier. Thank you.
friends, just one more round of applause for Grant, for Jade, for Gordon. Just terrific. Many, many thanks. Beautiful. We will now award the diplomas. saying I'm going to grow one day. As Craig Sellers makes his way to the table with the diplomas, I want to invite the first five graduates on the program and their families to walk to the back and then around to the diploma table there. So you're going to just need to keep watching in your program so that we can keep, keep moving. When it's your turn to get up here, you're going to see that there is a square within a square in the middle of the commencement terrace. And that's where you're going to stand families. And then when the child's name, when the graduate's name is said, then that graduate will move to that space. You are welcome, again, to take your mask off once you get to this spot. But we ask that you would please keep them on until that time. And just keep coming up, keep coming up. And you'll see when you get there that there are kind of five areas. In the case of twins, please come at the same time. I'm just going to wait for people to get in order, and you should come alphabetically, particularly since I can't really see who you are from here. And Ibrahim and his family are going to show us how to do it. So Ibrahim's family should have his diploma, and Ibrahim should not have his diploma. And I love how the family is in the front. Can you all see that? And Ibrahim's behind them. So I'm going to say, Ibrahim's family, please come up. And you all are going to go to the square within the square. See how well they're doing that? And if you all would like, you can take off your mask. And here I go, Ibrahim Ahmad. Now you all hug. And then you turn for the picture. And then once that picture is taken, family, you're going to step aside and we're going to get one with Ibrahim by himself. You're going to come this to, toward me, toward me. Ibrahim, yeah, stay there. And you're just going to put your mask back on. See how that was done? <laughs> okay, and Maddie and her family are going to step forward. So we're going to ask Maddie's family. Maddie, stay there. Got it. And then I say Madeline Archer Anderson. You all can take your masks off if you like. So you can see we're going to be here till about three. Wait, 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 wait. one more. I want to see your, and your diploma. As Dorothy and her family move up, if the next five families would start to get in line, that'd be great. So Dorothy's family is going to come up after Maddie gets her picture. Great. Dorothy M. Babb. Ian's family. Ian 
Michael Bain. Great Brandon's family. And you can take off your mask if you'd like. And just go to the square, back there, you're further back. There you go. Yep. Brandon Mackay Bonata. And then we just need a picture of Brandon alone, so we're going to do that one. There you go. Hold that. Great. Thank you, Eva's family. Great. Eva Claire Bartholomew. Starting to see how it works. Just come on up, come on up. There we go. That's family's next. Then more fashion. I should have said Thaddeus more fashion. Bradley's family. I love how you're lining up on your own. Thank you for doing that. Bradley, Geneva, away to Bell. Sydney S. Bendusky. Caroline Merrill Blackman.
Jacob's family. Jacob Bauer. Oh, I love the regalia. Doesn't that look great? Okay. Hugh Leander Brom. Next, we have Paul Brenman, who's accepting for his son, Julian Mark Brenman. <laughs> Leo's family. Leo Joel Berman. Marielle's family. Marielle, Georgia, Buxbaum. family of John Calder. So what we're going to do in the case of twins is we're in the, you all want to come together? They're like just doing it. Okay. <laughs> Roxy Morrison Calder and John Morrison Calder. Leave the graduates, there we go. C and Fonny is our next. Anthony Paul and Catherine Jean C and Fronny. Reed's family. Reed Jacob Cooper.
medically on your program is Kyla Danae Kaur, who is a graduate in absentia. Next, we have Devin's family. Devin Joseph Debajian. Next on your program is another graduate, uh, Julia Marie Donnie, who's a graduate in absentia. <laughs> Next family. Thank you. We're moving a little quicker now. Sylvan Robards Davidson. Jay Davis. Did you all want to take your mask off? Give me a picture. I just need that big bug going. There was a humongous bug on the podium, and I was running away. Bill Kennedy came and went and grabbed it and took it away. Grace Ellen Decatur. Lucas's family. Lucas Selver Discipio. Sophia Paulina Diaz. Abby Benenson Donenfeld. <laughs> Did 
Toby's family. Keep coming a little more. Perfect. Toby Ekator. Lila Epstein. Graduate Fang Mulin in absentia. And then we have Fanny's family. I should have had a, a drum roll, right? Okay, Benjamin Russell Flora. Next on our program is graduate in absentia, Lila Draves Foreman. And then, expand on this piece of paper. Elizabeth Marie Forsyth. Makai Gardner. It doesn't take your mask off. Can you get a cell phone? Yeah. You can take your mask off if you want for the picture. No? Okay. Isaiah McAvoy Gibson.
Thank you, Yellow Lands. Mary Rose and Nicole DeJin Gilliland. Emma Ann Mackenzie Gordon. You could take your mask off for the picture if you'd like. Walk across. Wait for your picture. No, for your picture. Lisa Bernadette Green. Jacob's family. Jacob Emerson Roche. This might be a long wait for some of you, but I think it's worth it once you get up here. <laughs> Chloe's family. <laughs> Chloe Elizabeth Haynes. Serafina Jade Howitt Halpern. Alexander Hayton. Next to our 
program is graduate in anesthesia, Jing Tianha. Genesis family, Genesis. Genesis, Michonne Johnson. Brian Jacob Jokelson. <laughs> Brian, fix your stall. It's lopsided. I don't know what lopsided oh, in the picture. <laughs> oh, we did it. I'm Let's such go. a mommy. I'm such a mommy. <laughs> If you've never been to a Friend Central commencement before, you might not um, know, but these stoles that the graduates are wearing are new and have never been done before. So it's our special tribute to the class of 2020. <laughs> Next family. Nicholas Kalman. Thomas Novick Kenny. Here, look. 
Focus sir. Just <laughs> you. Jasper's family. Jasper Grace Kalamago. PK's family. William Abraham Cathari. Ben's family. Benjamin Roy Lara. Taylor's family. Mateo Sheldon Lewis. Next graduate is in absentia, Lee Wei Tong. Also in absentia, Lin Yanzi. Vicky's family, come forward. Yeah. Chen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Vicky Liu. Also in absentia, 
Leo Zihao. And in absentia, Alejandro Xavier Humberto Lopez. Could Savannah's family please come up? Savannah Brooks Lopez. Grace's family, please come up. Grace Joy Lundberg. Family, please come forward. Isabel Hayward McFarland. Your diploma in front. Your diploma. Your diploma. Oh. <laughs> Cam's family come forward, please. Cameron Andrew Mack. Emma's family, please come forward. <laughs> Emma Yoon I. Malone. Diploma, please. Rachel's family, please come forward. Can you be in this, uh, near the square? Sorry, in the middle? Great, perfect, thank you. Rachel Iris McCabe.
rubber fish? Prince family? Bryn Louise Manon. Just Bryn. Ben's family, please. Benjamin Daniel Miller. Hey, just Ben. Darren's family, please. Darren, Stacy, Mims. Friends, can I just remind everyone to be socially distant out there? Thank you. Mason's family. Mason, Quinn, Mosley. Michael's family. Michael Moyerman. Dom's family, please. Dominic Navic. Omar's family, please. Omar Nichols.
Our next graduate is in absentia, Neil Ronshen. Gideon's family, please come up. Gideon Kareem Howell. Jonathan's family, come up, please. <laughs> Jonathan Sheehan Roach. Victoria's family, come forward, please. Victoria Mercer Rosa. Blake's family, come forward, please. Blake Andrew Roshkoff. Hannah's family, please come forward. Hannah Rossio. Lydia's family, please come forward. Lydia Joyce Russell. Family, please come forward. Eliza Lauren Saw. Lindsay's family, please come forward.
Lindsay Francis Schweitzer. One more, Lindsay, look here. Just Lindsay? Our next graduate is, is in absentia, Davin Suman. Could Ava's family come forward, please? Ava Harumi Waltman Scheffler. Jackson's family, please come forward. Jackson Elliot Snyder. Evans family, please come forward. Evan Schweitzer. Seven. Tristan's family, please come forward. Tristan Bennett Zabari. forward, please. Nyla A. Taliaferro. Hold that up. 
Henry's family, please come forward. Henry John Terry. Henry? Alex's family, please come forward. Alexander James Veith. Family, please come forward. Anna Frida Volt. Anna. Anna, fix your sash, please. Pull it down. Mom and dad are back in place. Dorothea Ruth Volk. Alex's family, please come forward. Wong Mylen. Our next two graduates are in absentia. Wang Yushen. Wang Zuyan. Could Jane's family please come up? Jane Lena Whalen.
Gordon's family, please come forward. Gordon, Richard, Anthony, Wilcox. Our next graduate is Rebecca Wusinich. Her father, Mark, is here to accept her diploma for her and pose her pictures. Savag's family, please come forward. Savag Yapoyan. Just about. Right here. Put your hat on. Our next graduate is in absentia, Yu Muhan. Our final graduate, also in absentia, Zhou Touje. Thank you all so much for your patience, and let's hear it for the class of 2020. Wherever you are, home, under the trees, out in the sun, put your caps back on for one moment because we are going to do an important ceremonial task together. If you would move your tassel all together now from the right to the left. We can call this commencement proceedings a giant and extraordinary and memorable success. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, class of 2020, French Central graduates, bravo. And we have Beth Johnson with just a few final instructions for us. Congratulations, friends. Beth? I too would like to add my congratulations to the class of 2020 here, there, and out and about in the world as they toss their caps. I just want you to know that during the whole um, ceremony, my phone was blowing up with teachers, staff, and administrators saying how beautiful you look, how great it seems, words like wonderful, bravo, congratulations. So I wouldn't want you to leave without knowing that there were plenty of people cheering you on today. It's been our pleasure to celebrate your graduation live. We will miss all of you and your families too. Just before we close, I want to share directions for our departure. And if I could just have your attention for one moment, 
This is still Miss Beth. I need your attention, please. And that is that if you are sitting, seats on the side, seats on the side, seats in the front, we're going to ask that you would depart first so that there's like a cascading effect so that we don't jump on top of each other as we depart. So again, on the sides and then in the front, that's how we're going to um, depart. And as space opens up in front of you, then you are welcome to say your goodbyes and leave. We're going to ask that you would please adhere to social distancing guidelines as you leave. Thank you for coming, all of you, everyone. Thank you for coming.